What's up guys, Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today I'm gonna to give you a few quick pointers on how to get really professional electric guitar and acoustic guitar tracks, just guitar tracks in general. There is a really nice and luxurious way to get your parts to be seamless and clean. The transitions are working well and the parts are played well. And there's a nice dynamic flow throughout your song. So the number one thing that I want you to think about when you're recording your acoustic or electric guitar parts is that they have to be organized, okay? So, and when I say organized, I'm, I'm talking about through sections, like is this the verse or the chorus or whatever um, section of the song. Of course, that all needs to be organized. But also, I want you to perform that guitar take, say it's the rhythm guitar track, for example, I want you to perform that from the beginning of the song to the end of the song as much as you can, right? Uh, if you need to go back and punch in after the chorus or wherever, you can punch in. But what I don't like to see out of recordings is um, something that's been edited heavily, right? So it's been cut and pasted and just like, so you get the same little four bars of guitar at the beginning, at the end of the song, and then the, you know what I mean? So the, the natural flow of the song really gets lost when you're editing guitar parts, especially rhythm guitar parts, especially when you edit those to death and then spread them all the same little clips all over the song, you're going to kill the dynamic flow of the song. So make sure that you can perform it from beginning to end. Okay. So that's number one thing performing it okay um, as you are performing in the studio you do want to keep in mind that it's not like performing on stage okay so as a section might change say you're going from the verse into the chorus the verse guitar part is like strummy right like right but then the chorus might start with Those kinds of musical moments are the perfect place to make sure that the transitions are nice and clean. And there's a fun thing you can do, which is basically just stop playing the strummy part and record on a whole new channel just the arpeggiating part, right? So um, in this song that I'm working on for a client, don't forget I do mix and play for people. I mix songs for people. I master songs for people. I play on songs for people. Um, check out garagebandandbeyond.com. Uh, for the details on that. But anyway, the song that I'm working here that I want to talk about is a good example. So this track up here is just strumming basic power chords. I'm just going to let you hear that. This track. Okay, so that is from a verse to a chorus section. So this one down here is doing long chords into the arpeggio. Right. And right there, that's pretty key. What I'm talking about right there. I let that long chord ring and then I start it. Now, this is the way that it worked for this song. Um, but you might be able to, you know, come up with your own method. The point is, is that the arpeggiating guitar is isolated from the like full strumming part. Right. Then if you come down here, I have a completely clean. Well, I think there's a little bit of grinding going on on this. Or maybe a lot. Right. So I have a whole other track that is only doing that section. Right. Now, if you listen to it as a whole. Right. It's nice and clean. You get that arpeggiating guitar. Now, the secret to me getting this arpeggiating guitar part to really have the force and the definition that I wanted it to have is a track that I haven't showed you yet, which is just this. Right? This is a, a, a track that is essentially playing the bass line, right? It's basically playing exactly the notes of the bass line. Obviously with a few. <laughs> variations but anyway that the, the point of this track was more or less to um back up the bass section but what i realized as i was mixing the arpeggiating guitar part is how much i thought this was helping so let me play it with this uh muted okay 
Okay. Now I'll put it back in. And so you're really just going to listen for the ones on those guitar parts. Right? It's those, the bum, bum, bum. I'll turn it off again. Hopefully you can hear this. It's pretty night and day to me. Right? It's just a little flavor. It just helps the ones. It just helps the... Right? Helps that moment. Which in inevitably is one of the... Not the weaker, but, you know, it's the part you really want to hear a lot when I'm playing arpeggios. It's something that I really like to hear a lot of. I like there to be some strong definition on those ones of the phrases. Um, so I found that just adding this one little trinket, and you could literally just sit here and go. Right? You could build up a couple of those tracks and really come up with something new that gives the guitar part depth. When you mix it, it'll be sort of low in the mix, but it'll be this thing that just gives it that little, mwah, that little flavor that you're like, there it is. That's what I wanted out of that. Okay. So that's just a little mixing tip. Um, you know, you can do this kind of stuff. Like if you hear, oh, I wish the guitar part sounded a little bit more like this. Just go in and play those single notes out of the guitar part that you want and mix it in, you know what I mean? Like on this, I had to go in and add this guitar part by itself. You know, I, I wanted to hear that more. I wanted to hear it like across the stereo field. Now, one other thing that I had to do on this arpeggiating guitar down here was I went through the EQ and I really isolated a couple of the notes that I wanted to hear. Again, I'm using a GarageBand EQ. I know you guys love it when I do this. Um, so I wanted to just show you with the analyzer on um, a couple the notes that I grabbed. Anywhere where you see me, you know, increasing it, this is the low note. So this is like the the E and A, that's really what this guy's catching. And this one is catching uh, the D and the, uh, sorry, the D and the A as well, mostly the D. Right, so I wanted to make sure that those frequencies were getting accentuated in this solo to track, right? It's not on all of those guitar tracks, just in one of them that I take the, the time to go in and really uh, find those notes and boost them using the EQ. Uh, if you did that, if I had done it across all of them, then it would have just sounded weird and like too much EQ was happening. But using it on this one track worked out really nicely and it just gave me definition in that arpeggiating guitar part. So I don't want to talk too much more about this. I just want you guys to take the time to A, play your songs from beginning to end as much as you can, punch in if you have to. Um, but also understand that there is a huge luxury in the recording studio that we don't have on stage. Playing guitar on stage is totally different than playing guitar in the recording studio. And I should have said that at the beginning. Um, but it, it is a huge luxury to be able to create a new channel and then just play that second guitar part on that new channel and let the sections go together in a, in a sort of organic, natural sounding way, instead of just like quickly switching from part to part, you know, which is what you end up doing live. But you know, you're not live in the studio, you're in the studio, you get to have fun, and really hone it and perfect it and get your stuff nice and clean. Of course, keeping it organized. Um, that is also really, really important. Not lots of tons of little bits and pieces, people. We like long sections of recorded music here so um i hope that helps i feel like i was a little bit all over the place um i have a massive neck thing going on right now i can barely move my head so <laughs> it, it hasn't been easy to get through this one today i hope you guys are having a great week so far thank you so much for watching all the videos the music videos that i've been putting out i really enjoy the comments i'm super happy that you guys like the songs that i'm writing and putting out on mondays or wednesdays um when when there's construction crews out my window um, anyway, you guys have an awesome weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.